Hi, this is Mike from We Build Stuff. This video is part of a series of build logs following the construction of a bar top arcade that uses a 28 inch screen. Follow along for the steps I use and see the process I take when building. Rather than skipping over parts of the build, I will be showing almost every single step, which is why this series has been split into multiple videos. Please check out the playlist link in the description, like, subscribe to show support for this channel. The topics covered in part one are my plans and design, layout, cutting out the pieces using different tools, and routing slots for the decorative T mold. All right, today I'm starting a custom build for a new arcade. This one's gonna feature a 28 inch widescreen. Somebody's asked me to make one, so I've had to modify the plans that you normally find on my page. Here, this one's gonna be slightly taller, a little bit longer this way. And each of the main pieces, instead of being 55 centimeters wide, they're going to be about 70. We'll see. I may change some things as I go. So since I don't have a full-size printout, I wrote this up in AutoCAD and have added all the different angles that I'm going to need to do at my protractor, and I'm going to draw everything on. These pieces, they're pretty much the exact same as my other ones, but I've made some changes just to the actual uh, dimensions couple here and there and I will make those available with the link in the description uh, the, the screen it's gonna have an opening that's gonna be 61 by 34 and hiding behind it will be all the blocks that hold it in place it's just a TV screen Okay, so I've drawn out my basic shapes here. The arc, I had to make do with kind of eyeballing it. I think it did an okay job with that. Just by bending something flexible, it doesn't have to be a ruler, it can be a thin piece of wood, something that is able to hold that shape, and then I'm able to trace a pretty smooth arc. I'm gonna go ahead and nail these two pieces together and cut them both out at the same time so that I don't have to redraw this twice. After that is finished, I will add on all my dimensions to figure out where are my blocks going, again, according to these plans. Where are all these pieces going to go? If you look over at this set of plans, that would be these lines here. That's where all of those pieces are going within. I may have to remeasure things as sometimes there's a bit of human error involved, but as long as they fit each other, everything should be awesome. All right, so I have drawn all my initial spots, for placement, where my blocks, my control panel, all of my stuff is going to go. I didn't have any kind of full-size template, but I did use here, I just used a big ruler, protractor, and another block of half inch MDF to trace out my width. Half inch MDF works pretty good. So by nailing the two pieces together, it's gonna to enable me to have two exact pieces when they're all cut out. You can use a jigsaw, a bandsaw, a scroll saw, anything that'll work. Just see, use what you got. Go nice and slow with a jigsaw and you can get perfectly straight lines with minimal sanding required. What you're seeing here has probably been sped up by about four times.
One of the main reasons I'm using a jigsaw for this is to show people that you can do this with any tool. My last video I used a bandsaw for this and all my big stuff. I tried to use smaller tools for this build, specifically to show people that you don't need a massive shop to do it. I'm lucky enough to be a high school shop teacher. I run an engineering and arcade building club, and that's where I get to do all this stuff with my students. Get a piece of wood, grab some sandpaper, wrap them together, and start sanding. Get everything smooth now, it'll make your life easier later. I still have them nailed together, so there's still going to be a mirror image. I took it to the big belt sander just to make it quicker, but you can still do this by hand. Now for ripping my panel pieces, I'm going to be using a circular saw, and I'll be using a table saw. I'm going to demonstrate here that you can do it with a circular saw, you just want to take it slow. I'm setting up a very simple saw guide here, just out of another piece of MDF. Set it to the width of your tool, you should be able to get nice straight cuts. Here I'm laying out some other spots just to make sure that I do have enough material. I've put it onto a crosscut sled on a table saw, and I'm cutting out some of the larger pieces. I can also do this with the small pieces as well. You can do this all with the circular saw or jigsaw, it just takes you a little bit longer. I can remove my nails now and begin layout on the other side panel. I want them to be a mirror image and both physically cut out as well as where I'm going to be adding all my dimensions and lines. I'm going based on my plans and measuring from the other panel that I drew. There's always going to be a little bit of human error but if I can cut that down I'll do my best. I'm using a piece of half inch MDF to lay out these lines because that's what the thing's going to be made out of. Might as well trace it rather than trying to draw that out with a ruler. When I was designing this, I wrote down all these little handy measurements in my AutoCAD file. That makes it way easier to figure out where these things are supposed to go. I always want to take my time when I'm laying things out, make it as best I can, it will make my life easier later, and give a nicer look to the entire build. I don't want anything wobbling when it's all done and sitting on a table. Next step I'm going to be doing is routing out a slot for the T-molding. Here you see a piece that is going to be my control panel. There will be a piece of T-molding on the front of this. Now off to routering the side panels. Take it nice and slow. This thing is spinning really fast. I'm wearing a dust mask to keep this stuff out of my face. I try my best to wear these at all times when working with MDF.
you're not sure what T molding is, don't worry. You'll see me install it in an upcoming video in this series. Here I am also ruddering out the bottom piece. This will have another piece of T molding on it as well. This piece is for the top panel. I have a nice angle cut, but that's optional. You can hide that behind other stuff if you don't have the opportunity to put an angle on it. So this ends part one. In part two, I'm going to be showing how to cut out the block pieces, my cabinet glue up, how I cut out my upper marquee, how I use T-nuts to hold the panels together, installing a rear door with a hinge, and doing my screen marquee layout that's going to be holding the entire screen together. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment below if you have any questions. I will always do my best to get back to anyone who has a good question.